It ends in a split draw. Valentina, kind enough to join us on this Monday morning. Can't thank her enough for that. Let's not keep her waiting any longer. Here she is, the bullet, joining us. Valentina, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. Could I ask, on on this Monday, less than you know, 48 hours removed from Saturday, uh, the adrenaline has gone away a little bit. H- how are you processing everything that happened on Saturday night? Uh, hello, Ariel. Yes, um, feeling good now. Resting, um, just like recovering from the small um, injuries what I had, and like some small, some <laughs> maybe not that small, but yeah, it's kind of like um, moving on. Life is life is continue, and um, I just continue to do what I love to do, like healing and go back to trainings. Is it, are there levels of like the the way in which you process this meaning? On this Monday, are you angry? Are you mad? Like on Saturday, it felt like when you met with the press, you were still processing everything. And I'm wondering now, two days later, what the emotion is that you would say you're feeling? Oh, uh, emotions, you know, like um, as I said on Saturday, it's kind of like double feeling. From one part, I'm very proud what I did inside of the octagon. And I, uh, do you know exactly three rounds for certain from t- uh, from five? It was like my rounds. I won that rounds. And uh, from other side, I was like few things in the fight was completely unfair. And yes, definitely the scorecard in the um, uh, final round, in the fifth round, 10-8. And uh, like Mike Bell, and he did like uh, um, something that, unexplicable things and i think the whole world would love to hear the explanation but uh, from the other side it's not me it's he is gonna live with that mistake forever Mm -hmm. Uh, so i agree with everything you just said in particular the explanation is something i've talked about a lot that this sport sorely needs you know we i i can reach out to you to get your side. I could reach out to Alexa. I could reach out to the promoter. I could reach out to, any, but the person who actually made this call, the tenant, those people never speak, right? The judges never speak. And I think that that is wrong. That is backwards. I have reached out to Nevada. I reached out to their commissioner, Jeff Mullen. I reached out to someone who knows Mike. I reached out to everyone to see if he would even give me a statement to explain, to tell us why I have not gotten that yet. But I just want to let you know that I've tried to do that. And I'm wondering if behind the scenes, anyone has told you the thought process, the reason for this 10-8? Uh, no, there is, um, there is nothing clear about that. What's the reason it was a 10-8? There is uh, no one is speaking about it. And I think my guess is because there is no explanation of that. And it's kind of like um, he had me on his scorecards winning three rounds right and it looks like in the final round he was like oh my god i cannot let that happen just i switch my mind and give 10 8 but 10 8 what does it mean in our sports 10 8 it's when a fighter cannot do anything he just like uh, going around running around from the opponent and just trying to survive and it's kind of like this is 10 8 but uh, you could see in the final fifth round it's not even close to 10-8. It's like in the stand-up, it's uh, completely like all the hits, what I was hitting, it was hard hits. And I felt that few of them, they landed like from the jab, they landed very hard to uh, her. And she kind of like was a sh- a shook off because I felt it. And it's kind of like completely already not 10-8. So yeah, control, control doesn't bring eight control it's nothing damage is this and there was any damage like that in the final round have you rewatched the fight yet no i didn't rewatch it yet but i rewatched like few um um the most important like like uh, like the last round like the uh, like illegal knees some something like that so like important things but not complete yet w- which rounds do you think you won decisively so it was completely like, uh, uh, my opinion, first round. And um, I would say, um, no, I cannot say like exactly which round it was, but I know exactly it was three. Okay. Uh, I think most people who scored it for you, including myself, thought you won uh, one, three, and uh, four. One, three, and four. And her two and five. Does that make, does that 
for feel like it's is that, is that sounds right yes okay um what did you think what was your feeling before they uh, uh, read the scorecards what were you thinking what were you feeling inside how did you think it was going to go uh, I was I was thinking it's three two in my side. I was thinking it's gonna be split decision. It was a war. It was a grand uh, fight. It was an amazing fight. It was like, uh, in my opinion, fight of the night. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that kind of like was uh, super easy and something. No, I fought there. I fought. I leave everything in the octagon. And I know people said like, oh, you if you wanna uh, leave it, uh, your victory, you have you don't have to leave it to the judges. Yes, right. You can say that, but um, no one um, has right to say that if they didn't try to fight in the octagon and that level what we are fighting. It's not that easy to do knockout submission or whatever with your uh, finger broken and with opponent who is in the top level. So it's kind of like, I know I did try to do everything and it was enough to secure three rounds of victory in my side. There are two sayings in MMA that I despise, that I hate. One is don't leave it to the judges. That's like implying it's it's an error, it's a mistake if you go the distance. That's crazy to me. It shouldn't be viewed as an error mistake. It's just a very close fight that neither person is able to finish them. So who cares? The judges should be not a punishment. They should be there to determine who's the winner. And then the other one that I hate is uh, to be the champion, you have to beat the champion. You have to just like, no, you just have to win three out of the five rounds. That's it. Like no one should score a fight saying, hmm, was this the champion? Was it not the champion? Did the challenger do enough? So all that is nonsense, if you ask me. Um, you showed up to the the press conference with your with your hand in a cast. Um, could you tell me when you injured it? When do you think you injured it? And and how did it affect you throughout the fight? Uh, so I injured my hand in the first round, and I could say it exactly. It was in the first round because I hit with um, a cross. And it's landed that side, so it kind of like affected my thumb. And I feel it's that that moment right away. Right now, um, later today, I will have um, a um, X-ray and um, like you CPI. They're thinking there is uh, more like ligaments might involve. But right now, you can oh. see the arm like full, like swollen, wow. and it's kind of like this finger doesn't move. Oh my so God. it's when all um, like purple side and here's the bruises so it's kind of like affecting it, uh, my movements right now at the moment but um and i felt it right away in the first round that's why it was the reason why i kind of like could not finish my submission but because like this is what affected me to pull my grip uh -huh. Right. And I had the position when I was like behind her back on the like the position, but I couldn't I could not like even close my arm because the finger was the reason why it's happened. But again, I'm not here saying that uh trying to find excuses why that happened. I'm not here. It's kind of like uh, if I would try to find excuses, I would say, oh, my God, I, 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 I broke my finger. I cannot go and continue the fight. But no, I fought four more rounds with a broken finger and people cannot say anything about it. I'm not complaining here. I'm here speaking the facts, why it's happened. And I cannot explain my opinion. I cannot explain why uh, it's happened like that. Right. But um this is kind of like what I am uh, type of a person. If I feel that I have to continue, I will continue. I cannot disappoint all people who came to watch the fight. I cannot disappoint the promotion who like uh, put this um, like responsibility in a good way, responsibility on my shoulders that I have to go and show myself. So I feel that I have to just continue and try to do everything to the very uh, like last, last minute. And I did that. I fought with that such a hand. I fought on my heart that I secure three rounds victory. And this is again, not my fault of the mistake of a judge. And this is not I am who's gonna live with that decision. This is he is who will like forever be remembered with that mistake. And next time when he gonna judge, and I don't know if he's gonna be judging another fight as well, he will be like 
looking from the uh, fighters, corners, and their teams with the big, 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 um, like these eyes of um, doesn't believe in that person um, in his professionalism. Do, do you think that you need surgery? Uh, this is what I will see uh, today afternoon because I think like X-ray and um, MRI will show what I will have to do with the hand. Have you ever been in a position like that where you've had to fight the majority of a fight with a broken hand? Uh, actually, no. This one is was first time, yes. Truly, I mean, I can't even imagine 20 plus minutes with your power hand injured like that. One of the toughest things you've ever had to deal with in a fight? Uh, one of them, yes. It's kind of like all together, but I think the adrenaline would mm. uh, fight bring you, like fight itself. It's also a little bit protects you. And another, like in, in my mindset in this moment was like, Whatever happened, I will die in the fight, no matter what, I will die there, but I will continue. So it's kind of like, it's hard to explain for the people who don't understand the mentality of the fighter, but the fighters and people who are close to the fight, they will understand me very clear that what I felt in that moment. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Mike is going to have to live with this, and I understand where you are coming from. In the end, though, the only person that's truly affected is yourself, right? You're not the champion on this Monday. And who knows how that changes your history, your legacy. Nothing changes in the past, but like, who knows when you're fight? you know, if you fight for the belt, so much could happen, right? Um, nothing is guaranteed in life. And so do you feel, do you feel like you've been robbed? Do you feel like you've been like, you know, like, yes, he has to deal with that inside, but you're ultimately the one that has to deal with the consequences. And so I'm wondering how that makes you feel. Uh, you know, Ariel, I want to say that, um, Yes, I am the one who's affected. I am the one, um, not I am, <laughs> she is as well, <laughs> who got a result like a draw from mm. this fight. So it was not any kind of a, a loss, but unfortunately the rules of the, um, um, of the fighting world is the same. So if it's a draw, the a belt stay with the person who had it. Yes, but from other side, I don't think that it's going to affect my legacy because the truth is here the whole world 20,000 people who was like watching fight live in T-Mobile arena they saw the result they know the truth and the truth is here it doesn't matter what people trying to make up after that how they score or what they do the truth is there and every time you see the fight and you feel the truth and i know i didn't lost i know uh all people see that i didn't lost and we are not speaking about lose because it was a draw yeah, yeah right. and kind of like this is uh this is it the truth is here that's why um it's not affecting my legacy okay um just curious when you're in the back does anyone from Nevada, does anyone from you, I don't know, does anyone come and talk to you about this? Do you get any sort of, hey, this is what we think happened or this is what we're going to do? Or does anyone tell you anything? Uh, at that moment, backstage, like after the fight, I was not like, I, I didn't have time like to actually to process everything. If there was any approach, it was approached to my manager. And the, I definitely will like have like this week because we kind of like, uh, she's not bothering me. She's trying to like give me like sometimes to uh, have a little bit rest. But we definitely be gonna see each other this week and see like and reflect everything what happened and what our like plans to do. You, so yeah, it's going to happen in these days. Okay. And because it's so uh, controversial, have you even thought about maybe even, it doesn't really work, but I'm just curious, like to appeal historically, these things don't really work, but will you try to appeal the decision? Are you thinking about that at all? Uh, you know, right now, I don't want to say anything like yes or no, but I think it's a, a matter of time to measure everything, to see exactly how it's going to work and what it's like to rewatch the fight and see like uh, maybe if uh, we will have more explanation about the situation with more ev evidence, like I'll really take decision. But right now, as I'm saying, like um, it's up to uh, think about about it twice and uh, like take the right decision but uh from um, another side um kind of like i'm um happy with my performance and this is what it uh, counts and um this is what it matter 
Uh, what was your take on how Alexa fought? Uh, because I thought both of you deserve all the credit. It was an incredible fight. Um, and and uh, just coming off the last, I mean, it was just so entertaining to watch. And the heart that you guys showed, the determination was just incredible. Your 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 feelings on how she fought, she has come along. You've been here at the top for a long time. We're now seeing her evolution and she's come a long way. I'm just wondering if you were at all impressed or if there's another word that you would use to describe the way in which she fought. Uh, you know, I didn't have time to see um, exactly the way of her revolution or whatever, yeah. But, um, like, if she's there and we had that such amazing fights, that means, like, it's kind of like top level of the fight game. It's top level of the opponents. And no one can take uh, credits from her, like, being, like, fighter who give it all and everything we fought. And we fought amazingly good, but I still think like, um, and everyone thinks the same three rounds. I won that fight and the belt supposed to be uh, today with me, but it didn't happen. And this is a fact. So we had a draw and unfortunately the rule says like the belt stay with the who uh, already hold it at that moment. Um, somewhat reminiscent of Edmonton when you fought Amanda Nunes, where it was a close decision that some people thought you won. Did you were you feeling the same things on Saturday that no, you felt? No. no, no, it's not the same way. It's it, it's even more obvious that it's uh, like kind of like uh, different. It's different. It's uh, actually like um, unfair thing with the scoring and like um, no, it's uh, it's it's completely different things. Okay. Uh, you're usually very focused and unflappable and intense, but I, I noted like when they showed you walking into the arena, like you had a look on your face, like you you were going out there to do very bad things, like you were very locked in. Was there any difference in the way you were approaching this coming off the loss as opposed to your fights in the past? Mm, of course, yes, because it's kind of like uh, affect your brain. It's uh, uh, not your brain, but your performance. It's of course definitely it's different approach. You understand that you have to fight like as the last time in your life completely, and um, yeah, because uh, being for so many long champion, it's kind of like give you that uh, feeling of uh, uh, kind of like different. It's not a bad feeling, but it's it, it's just a different feeling. But here um, you kind of like uh, going uh, to do whatever you need to secure the victory. How, how would you describe the last six months for you when you're when you're not champion? Do you feel people treat you differently? Talk about like how how do you compare your long time as champion? as opposed to the last six months where you weren't champion? Oh, uh, you know, um, I didn't feel too much difference. Uh, and it was more like uh, people uh, was so good with me, trying to motivate me, trying to, like, give the best what they have. And, like, um, every time so polite, so friendly, so good, so nice. No, uh, I know some people, they... Um, experience like bad experience after they losing the belt but i cannot say the same i felt the only amazing things from the fans what i have and uh, it was amazing it was like very inspirational six months what i had in my preparation it was very dedicational very motivational and like just like go there and um, dedicate your full time to just uh, preparing for the uh, fight. I, I know nothing is really like a coincidence, but uh, you you showed up, I think, at the media day, like you were wearing sort of like army gear. Uh, I, I thought that was very cool. Uh, what inspired you to do that, the hat and the outfit and all that? I'm sorry, something happened with my light. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> all the time blinking. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it was just kind of like... Um, if you watch my social media, if you watch my lifestyle, it's all about outdoors. It's all about like power. It's all about the spirit. And for me, like military, um, like clothes, like this color, green hockey um, color, it's like one of my favorite. That's why I um, I just decide to put on me everything what I feel comfortable in. And the jewelry, what I choose, it's like reflecting the knives with the wolf hat. So it's kind of like also like very powerful and like, um, yeah, just like very strong and secure and um, like um, 
the things what I feel good in. And um, I think this is most important. How you feel yourself inside is going to bring everything uh, outside as well. Uh, one last thing on the fight, and then I want to ask you about the future, and then I'll let you go. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, you mentioned the illegal knees. And I don't know if anyone has talked to you about this, but I do believe the rule has actually changed where it has to be two hands, not one. Do you do you are you saying that you had two hands down or one hand? Because if it's one hand, uh, I think I doubt that it was two hands uh, down. Uh, yes, um, if the change, if the rules are changed, it's only two hands. But it lead, going into the fight, my understanding was one hand. It's like your grounded opponent. And um, yeah, it's kind of like um, the same what I mentioned. We will have to uh, go deeper in yeah. that rules. And see. But if it was um, it if it was illegal knee, it's okay. It, like, uh, <laughs> it's not okay, actually. But if, if it was legal, yes, that is like, we cannot do nothing. But if it was some kind of like uh, that, she not supposed to do and i what i i'm saying what i was feeling right now uh like reflecting the fight it's kind of like some people for illegal knees they are losing their belt what happened with peter Jan, and some people throwing five knees and still kind of like i'm not asking that she has to be stripped from the belt. I'm not saying that she has to be taking points from that. No, I'm not saying that all. I'm saying just maybe from the next fight, when I will have the same situation and it will throw the same five knees to the head, to the grounded opponent, that won't be judged. That won't be stopped the fight and that won't be taken any points. So I just ask him to treat everyone the same way and i want to say exactly the same i thought that it's kind of like uh not supposed to happen and i want to say that uh herb dean he was a referee on the fight and i respect him a lot i think he's the uh, uh, like the major professional in the game and he exactly know what he's doing and that's why when i saw him it, it you can see it in the fight and i was asking like why the it's kind of like not stopped why it's continue and he said continue and i continue the fight this is what my only opinion so i'm not saying that it was something that has to be uh deal with i'm not saying that i'm saying again i think the herb dean is uh like, like huge professional in what he's doing and i'm only saying that next time i'll do the same don't say that that was illegal me don't people dare to say that because they it, it has to be like equal way the same way if one did that then other ones has to do that as well uh, I know this may be a silly question, but just so we have it clear, if the UFC calls you or your management up and says, what does Valentina want next? What is your response? Uh, you know, actually, in the in my whole entire career, 30 years, I never had that kind of call. When a That's promotion crazy. Said, what what yeah. Valentina wants next? Usually it's like approach. Valentina, we have this is one this one for you. We have this next opponent for you. Are you like agree to fight this date? And I said, Yes, I am agree. I'm ready. I need time to prepare. I need time to heal. This is what like 30 years of my experience. That's why I'm very doubt that that's gonna be the call, a call right that speak uh, asking like what you wanna do next. Usually I am the person who is kind of like, I'm ready. Let's, uh, let's go. Let's do that. Okay. So what do you think the call will be? What do you think they'll offer you next? Whenever that time comes? Uh, it's very hard for me to know, uh, to say exactly what I think it's going to be next. Uh, right now I thinking about, um, taking all images, what I need for my hand, make sure that I will be healed for the next fight. And I don't want to hold anyone in the division from moving forward as well, right? That's why um, when I'm ready to fight, I will fight anyone. If people want me to see Trilogy, I'm here. And I think um, it's kind of like deserved as well. If they want to see like uh, moving up, I want to go move up. If they want to see fight something one or something else, I want to fight like anyone because this is what, this is my mindset. This is what um, I'm not choosing my opponent. I just go and fight.
Wow. So, so I, th- I was just going to ask you, would it be fair to say that if it was up to you, you would choose Fighting for the Belt next, Trilogy next, whenever that time comes? But it even sounds, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're, you're not dead set on that, that you're open to other things? Uh, you know, kind of like I understand that um, I, I can say whatever right now, that, but I don't want to sound a little bit like um, not right. And I understand that uh, I don't know what kind of injury I have in my hand, right? I don't know how long it's going to take to heal it. And I only don't want no one to sit without the fight and just wait. And I know that uh, girls, they want to fight. They need to fight because this is our like fighter's life, our career. This is how we get money <laughs> at the end, right? And this is the only things what I'm saying. I don't want to say nothing in a rush without the uh, bottom side, the circumstances, how soon I can get back. If I would be like a healthy 100 person, I would say, yes, let's go. Let's do the trilogy like next three months and I am ready. But I cannot say right that, uh, uh, right now that, that things because I don't know the study, uh, like the, the situation of my health, of my hand right now. Understood. Um, are, are you open to fighting in Mexico? Would you be okay with that if that, if that is offered to you? You know, I think it would be fair and very right to have uh, next event I- event in Kyrgyzstan, Independence Day of Kyrgyzstan. And it's going to be very smart because it has to be equal, right? We cannot do like Mexican Independence Day twice, right? right? It's kind of like very fair. And I think uh, all the people in Kyrgyzstan, all government in Kyrgyzstan, they will do everything possible and impossible to make it happen. That's why I think if you see we want to do that, they kind of like will find the way to do that. And especially that uh, on the fight, there was like people from the government who flew in to from Kyrgyzstan to wow. uh, United States especially to watch and support me fighting. So it's kind of like speaks a lot about that. Our president uh, of uh, Kyrgyzstan, Sadr Japarov, he's very like in the sport. He's very like um, as a sport person. And uh, it's very important for me as an athlete to have this support from him as well. So it's kind of like, um, yes, I think it's going to be fair. Independence Day of Kyrgyzstan in Kyrgyzstan. And it's time to do that i think it's very right time to do that that would be incredible by the way correct me for not knowing uh when is kyrgyzstan independence day oh it's kind of like just past it was 31 of august uh, but it doesn't matter if we can celebrate it earlier okay fair. Do, and do they have an arena uh, like a big arena to hold an event like this indoor arena yes okay yes you have perfect let's make it happen um and by the way just curious if you have a take uh, if you aren't if you aren't fighting, if you're going to take time off because of the hand, who do you think, Blanchfield or Furo? Do you have a take on who should be next for the belt? Do you have any sort of opinion on that? It's kind of like uh, a very hard question. And uh, um, when uh, Erin fought, I thought like, okay, this is uh, Erin, she's next. When uh, Manon fought, I thought like, okay, Manon fought. But now it's kind of like makes sense to make them fight to decide who is the next one. Okay. Um by the way, did it did it bother you at all that she got like a custom belt and you were a champion for so long and you never got a custom belt? Mm, I think you would have to uh, ask that question to every single champion who was the champion, who is the champion. It's kind of like no, not not fair just asking that uh, just only myself. Yes, and um, I don't think that unfair, right? It's kind of like um, mm, some things what is happening in the life some person have to fight for their rights have to fight to build their legacy have to pass through the um fire and water and like to see the all obstacles in their way and some people they are just like given that things without any like um having trouble and difficulty this is the life and um this is what it's happened in the life and uh, yeah all these obstacles it makes you even stronger person i'm it's kind of like physically and 
mentally as well. That's why everything what is happening, it's for your good and for a reason. And just to be clear, you said on on uh, Saturday, like, oh, it's Noche UFC, and uh, you know, maybe do do you feel like Mike Bell made that decision because he was trying to favor her? Do you do you feel like that's what happened here? Uh, you know, I want to hear it from him to say it otherwise. I want to hear it from him to say that that was not reason why. I want to hear from them why it was three rounds winning, like see me winning and then suddenly decide, oh my God, I want, I don't want to let it happen. Mm. (laughs) 10-8. Yeah, it's good. It was not (laughs) 10-7. Yeah, that would be credible. I I love 10-7s, but not uh, in this regard. And and there are some people who said 48-47. Alexa, what do you think of those scorecards? Uh, You know, it's kind of like um, split decision in that fight. uh, It's something that... um, could happen. This is kind of like one so one side, one so the other side. Kind of like uh, I think uh, that should be three rounds, my victory, two rounds, three ma- rounds to my side, two rounds to her side. This should be all three scorecards. But um, when the fight is um, so intense, so technical, so much uh, like nonstop action, you can see any any any. Um, anything like um, uh, judges giving victory to one side to another, but not 10-8. Is there anything, before I let you go, anything that uh, I didn't ask you about that you want to say? Again, thank you so much for the uh, the time here today, but is there anything else that you wanted to say before we say goodbye? I really want to appreciate appreciate uh, and say thank you to every single people who supports me, who sends me like uh, all these amazing vibes for the fight. And I really feel it. I really appreciate it. All the love, all the uh, like support what um, I've been given. And that's why uh, every time I, I, I'm entering into the octagon, I like trying to do my best to pay back the love what I was giving. It's kind of like uh, mutual things that we are like fighter in fans, like um, showing to each other. And yeah, to just uh, again, thank you to Tiger Muay Thai for amazing training camp what I had in Thailand for three months. I want to say thank you to all my training partners who took uh, part of this amazing journey to... um, um, Jason Andrade Muay Thai to Smiley Ac- Academy from Florida again with all my training partners to my sponsor Monster Energy amazing like to give the, the power to continue and this is the most important for me to have this support from people what I care what people from people what I um, adore and I know while they're with me we're going to do incredible things in the future. So there is no, no time to stop. There is no time to think and uh, to have pity for yourself because there is no reason. Amazing performance, amazing fight. Legacy is here. It's continue. It's never stop. And just forward with the full head up. And you're not done. 30 years, you're still going strong. You still have a lot left in you. Of course, yes. Of course, yes. And it's kind of like uh, you could see in the fight when the person is is done, it's kind of like slowing, doesn't want to fight, doesn't have desire. But you could see in that fight the full eyes of desire, power and speed and everything. Like um, if you could see in my uh, history of the fighting, I was over fight few generation of the fighters so i want that like uh uh, uh that that uh female fighters who i fought with some of them already have like babies family forget about the fight and like don't don't even remember that they are fighters some of them that just recently like finishing their career but i'm still i'm still here i'm still on top and now the younger generation coming and i'm still showing that i am the best i can like fight fight as like uh, as no one with full of power and everything and this is what's important for me to continue 
to be the same, to be the same person who I am, uh, build my legacy, build uh, the confidence in another girls who just starting their journey uh, in martial arts. And this is the most important. The, the, by the end of the day, made in fight, this is what is number one. Much respect as always, Valentina. Uh, great stuff. Congratulations on an incredible fight. Uh, I'm sorry it panned out the way in which it did. I'm sorry about the injury. I hope you heal up soon and it's not too serious. And I can't wait for that Kyrgyzstan Independence Day card. That is going to be incredible stuff. So uh, well done. I love Thank you for coming on and good luck to you. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. Have a good day. There she is, Valentina Shevchenko. What a legend. And yes, she is right. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, Give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.